a number of individuals who've had polio in their younger days are now presenting with a constellation of features which include pain, weakness and fatigue. It's not a reinfection of polio, it's really either a progression of the neurological damage that occurred with the polio when they had their poliomyelitis all those years ago, or a consequence of the biomechanical stresses and strains that their body has gone through due to the original weakness that they were left with after the poliomyelitis infection. Post-polio syndrome is really a constellation of symptoms that I mentioned before, weakness, fatigue and pain, with some other features as well. People may well have swallowing difficulties, respiratory difficulties, temperature changes, mood changes, behavioural changes, but it's really an effect of the wearing out of the remaining nerves that were there after the original poliomyelitis infection. I like to think of the late effects of poliomyelitis being a little different to post-polio syndrome, although there are a lot of uh, similarities. But really the late effects of poliomyelitis are due to the wear and tear on the body and the, the stresses and strains due to the, the original weakness, fatigue, that puts, and the effects then on the rest of the body. A classic example would be arthritis in the left leg when someone has had polio affecting the right leg. It's the extra burden that that left leg has had to carry that's worn it out. I think what you can say is the late effects of polio become more apparent in the non-affected parts of the body. So you, you can align, if someone's got a left-sided leg weakness, then you'll see a lot of effects on the right side of the body which has been used to adapt for that left weakness. But it's not exclusionary. It, you can have effects on the left side of the body as well. Whereas the post-polio syndrome features tend to be generalised and affect all limbs and it vary in the way it presents, depending on the demands on the body. Not necessarily. It depends on the extent of the original infection, the age of the original infection, and the lifestyle of the individual. We would estimate at least 50% of individuals who did suffer polio, and what I'm talking about when I said, say suffer polio, have paralytic polio with some weakness left after the original infection, never report any symptoms. But those who do report symptoms can relate it back to the original infection and the weakness that was that remained after that infection. There's a rule of thumb with post-polio syndrome, and that is that the younger you are, that is under the age of five, and the less severe the attack, the less likely you are to develop post-polio syndrome. You can't say the same thing for the late effects of polio because if you're looking at the biomechanical issues with that, but certainly from that progressive disorder that is known as post-polio syndrome, there is a correlation between the severity of the original presentation and the age. It was really probably the late 80s, early 90s where a lot of more emphasis uh, was put on the impact of the polio on, the polio on individuals later in their life. But there was a lot of discussion about it even in the 50s, 60s and 70s when polio survivors were starting to not be as efficient in their lifestyles as they previously were. What you have to remember is this is a group of individuals who are very strong-willed and very determined because after their original infection they had to try and keep up to be normal, whatever normal is, and by that they had to work at 110% compared to the able-bodied individual who worked at 100%. That's the way they operate, but as they get a bit older their body doesn't keep up with their mind anymore and you'll often find that you still have this vibrant intelligent individual who's striving and striving but they're getting frustrated because they can't keep up in the same way as they used to. I think probably the first answer is be sensible. Pace yourself. Look at your day 
conserve energy, be ergonomically smart, set your kitchen up, set your office up, set your car up so that you're not putting extra stresses on your body. Take time out. One of the biggest things that I find that frustrates polio survivors is that they have to take 30 minutes out in the day to rest. Because their mindset is of being of someone who wants to do, they see that as wasted time. What I often suggest is, okay, if you need that 30 minutes hour rest in the day physically, pick up the newspaper, pick up a book, book stimulate your mind, use it, look at it in another way. It's still a time that you can be positive in your lifestyle, but you do need to protect the rest of your body. We believe that that's due to the dropout of neuronal function, so we're losing nerves over time. What happens is after the original in infection, the, n the remaining nerves have to take on the role of the, the nerves that have been lost. And they do this by sprout, for want of a better term, sprouting out to cover more muscle by one nerve. But it's, it's like sending uh, a nine-man soccer team to play an 11-man game. Sooner or later, the nine man team becomes less efficient. And that's what happens with the body's neuromuscular system, the nerves and muscles, that they become less efficient. And the way that presents is fatigue. You tire. It's overwhelming. It's not just a physical fatigue as well. And that's the thing that people don't necessarily understand. It's often cognitive as well. They just, they feel like they're forgetting things. They can't pay attention. And it just comes in a wave that it, they basically become for want of a better term, paralysed totally and too tired to do anything.